Hi kids, welcome to the Red Mill Museum Village. My name is Gina and I'm going to be your virtual tour guide today. Now, if you've never been to the Red Mill, you might not know that there are actually a lot of other buildings here, not just this big red one. And today, I'm going to take you on a tour of one of them called the One Room Schoolhouse. Are you ready? Let's go. Here we are. Now, usually when I start the schoolhouse tour, I start right here by this sign. But I'm used to having a lot of great kids like you all around me asking wonderful questions and usually making me laugh. This year has been a lot different for us tour guides. And I know it's been different for you kids too. Remote learning is just not the same as going to school, is it? But did you know that school here in Hunterdon County hasn't always been like what you were used to. This building, known as the Bunker Hill Schoolhouse, really was a school in nearby Alexandria Township. Here's a picture of some of the real students that went to school here. Aren't there a lot of them? All in one building with only one teacher. How did they do it? Let's go inside and see. Now, if you were here in person with me, I would ask you to line up in two straight lines before we went into the schoolhouse. But you would have to do it the way that the kids who used to go to school here had to do it too. So that means two lines, one for boys, one for girls, stand straight and tall and no talking. Are you ready to step back in time? Stand in your lines while I go ring the bell to signal the start of our day. Welcome students. On your way into the classroom, please remember to drop off the piece of coal that you brought from home into our coal bucket so we can keep the fires going. Everyone can stay warm today. Younger children, move up to the front of the room closer to the teacher. Girls on one side, boys on the other. It's very important to stay separated. And older children can sit in the back. But older kids, remember you need to do your chores first like cleaning the ash out of the stove, getting the fire started, keeping the fire going, and taking this bucket outside to fill it with water so that when anybody gets thirsty, we can all take a drink from this one ladle. Nobody brought their own water bottles. Did you hear what I said? Younger kids in the front, older kids in the back, all together in one room. So that means if you have older brothers or sisters or younger brothers and sisters, you're all together in one room with one teacher the whole day. I bet some of you might like that and most of you wouldn't. So how did just one adult teach the younger kids their ABCs and at the same time teach the older kids their geography? Well, they didn't. Sometimes students would also have to be teachers. At some points during the day, the eight-year-olds might have to work with the five-year-olds and teach them how to write their ABCs in a sand table, while the teacher worked with the 10-year-olds and the 12-year-olds practiced their math facts all by themselves. Why did they use a sand table for writing? Well, paper used to be very expensive, and a sand table was a nice, inexpensive, easy, and actually kind of fun way to learn to write your letters and numbers. But once you were good at that, you could use a slate board. Now, a slate board is just a little chalkboard, and you could write on it with a slate pencil, which is like a piece of chalk. Now, since paper was so expensive, slate was really good. You could use it over and over again without having to buy a new one every time. Let's say your teacher told you that you had to write your vocabulary words for the week on your slate board. Great job. Now, you have to study these words because you want to get 100 on your test this Friday. But now it's time to get ready for math, so students, please erase your slate board so we have room to practice math facts. Uh-oh. It's going to be really hard to study these words if we just erase them, isn't it? Better not complain to the teacher, though. Teachers in one-room schoolhouses were very strict. That meant they had a lot of rules and they expected students to listen. If you didn't listen, a teacher was allowed to hit you with their hand or with a stick called the rod of correction. Some of the rules that they had then seem pretty strange to us now. For example, if you came to school with a dirty face or dirty hands, 
teacher could hit you two times. If girls and boys played together, they would get hit. If you climbed a tree at recess more than three feet, you would get hit for that too. Hitting is not the only way that students could get punished. Have you ever seen one of these? This is called the dunce cap. And if the teacher thought that you were misbehaving or not doing a good job on your work, you would have to wear the dunce cap and sit in the front of the room while everybody else finished their work. But sometimes if the teacher thought you were being very naughty, they might have you sit right here by the window with your dunce cap on. That way, anybody walking past might see you and then go tell your parents before you even got home. Uh-oh. Is anybody in your classroom or your family very nosy, always having to know what everybody else's business is? If the teacher in the one-room schoolhouse thought that you were being nosy, they might punish you this way. They would draw a circle on the chalkboard and then tell you to stick your nose in that circle and stand there for a long time. Saved by the bell. Well, that means we're out of time for today. I actually have so much more I want to teach you about the one room schoolhouse and all the other buildings at the Red Mill too. So please stay home, wash your hands, stay healthy. And next spring, come back to the Red Mill and learn all about them with me and the other tour guides. Thanks for watching. To learn more about the historic Red Mill Museum Village, including information on how to become a sustaining donor or how to make a one-time tax-deductible donation, please visit theredmill.org.